What we are going to do now is essentially go into phase 3 where we look at what are the risks that these projects fail the face, uh, what makes a majority of them fail right. So, uh, this part is going to be about crash and bang. So, it is going to be about failure. So, we are going to look at a variety of risks uh, and of course, we are going to use do this through case studies right. So, the idea is to pick up real world cases look at what happened on these projects ok. So, we are going to start talking about risks first and then we will figure out uh, uh, who is going to present the cases. So, group 7 are we? Uh, good afternoon everyone. So, we are group 7 today and uh, the topic which we will be discussing today is the risk, uh, the type of risks and how to mitigate them ok. Uh, basically, what is risk? Uh, we usually anticipate some things to happen, but they do not happen the way we think. So, the possibility that the anticipated things may turn out differently is called a risk. Uh, the anticipated things can be the events or the impacts which are resulting from the events or some other associated actions. Uh, there is always a debate on if the risk is objective characteristic or it reflects subjective uh, perceptions. It is like we may think that uh, some event happening is a risk, but uh, it might differ from perspective to perspective. Uh, there is always a confusion between risk and uncertainty. Risk is when you know the outcomes, you know the future outcomes, but uncertainty is when you do not know what the future outcomes are. So, both are different. Uh, few uh, people actually uh, differentiate the risks into diversifiable and non diversifiable risks. So, ok, we will get into it later. Uh, then, coming to uncertainty. Uh, Uncertainty is when you do not have knowledge about what is going to happen in future. So, if the sponsors are ignorant about the information, if they have no information, uh, then it uh, leads to uncertainty. Weak uncertainty is when you have information, but you are not able to do anything. But strong uncertainty is like you do not even have the information. Indeterminacy is uh, the events which you think are going to happen depend on some other external and internal things and the future is indeterminate. So, risk plus uncertainty combined with indeterminacy and there gives the ambiguous decision making context. Uh, so, this is these are the different types of projects and uh, the risks, the major kinds of risks faced by them. The red portions denote that the high risks, green are like low risks, blue is moderate risks. For example, uh, we can take hydroelectric power. The technical risks are moderate, but they face very uh, strong social and institutional risks because that leads to environmental disturbances and it might even lead to uh, resettlements and rehabilitations of people surrounding it. So, you can understand about the other risks of other projects from this table. Uh, so, uh, they did an uh, analysis from uh, several managers of various projects and they divided all the risks into three categories. They are completion risks, market related risks and institutional risks. Uh, they found out that the dominant risks were uh, market related risks followed by completion and then institutional risks. So, market related risks, uh, the first uh, part of the market related risks is market risks. Uh, this is this usually happens in some power projects or transportation projects. We assume that the demand is going to be a certain value, but we might not be able to that uh, we might not be able to achieve that demand or uh, because of wrong prediction or because of some changes in the economic growth. Uh, there are financial risks. These are the difficulties which we face uh, when we want to get lend, uh, lenders and investors. Uh, these are uh, different from technical and economic risks. So, if if you do an initial study 
and if it if the project shows insufficient returns then it comes under economic risks but if the initial studies show that the project is viable that you will be uh, getting sufficient returns but if you are not able to go forward that comes a fine that comes under financial risks uh the third type of risks are supply risks these are similar to market risks but uh here okay i'll give an example for example a uh, uh, hydroelectric power project it depends on the precipitation levels if the rainfall is low then uh, it is it is risky or suppose we can take an example of oil platforms if the fuel is if the raw material is less then it is risky uh the second category is completion risks so uh there are technical risks the designs uh, can be complicated or the technologies can be complex otherwise uh the technologies uh, even though they are complex we might be able to achieve them but the conditions might turn out bad uh this gets worsened because once we are stuck in it's difficult to come back suppose we are in the midst of tunneling and something goes bad we can't come out of it uh construction risks uh these are the difficulties faced by sponsors and contractors uh the sponsors usually uh, rely on contractors uh they think that they can do the difficult tasks well and they can manage uh but if it's a risky project it uh, the construction becomes risky uh operational risks uh the construction is done the technical risks are over but there is a possibility that the equipment will not function adequately so it can be reduced by investing in high quality systems from initial stages itself uh institutional risks uh again the first kind is regulatory risks uh we the private parties they face many oppositions and resistance from the public uh, authorities and there will be delay in getting approvals for environmental plans or for the design plans and so uh every project has uh some rules and regulations governed with it if they are not well defined it becomes riskier uh for example in emerging economies the rules are defined but they are not strict uh in that cases they, uh, there is a greater chance of regulatory risks happening also if the private investor doesn't have the bargaining capacity or if he doesn't have the experience these risks might happen influence of politicians and bureaucrats also uh, give rise to these risks uh social acceptability risks like we uh, discussed in the cochabamba water supply there were many social risks that was like we got opposition from the people from some agencies and pressure groups uh sovereign risks is when uh, the government which has actually given a contract initially but now it renegotiates the contracts so it can happen if uh, there are regime changes and it gives rise to uh, a uh, hostile environment to private investments or if there is pro competition policy changes also pro competition policy changes is when uh, you suppose decrease the toll fares or decrease the tariff rates and you try to encourage competition that time you the government wants to re renegotiate uh, we have seen different kinds of risks till now but it has been observed that there is an interaction between the risks too some risks are linked to life cycle of the projects they are called hurdle risks for example financial risks uh if you get the financing in the initial stages then it's done you uh, that risk will not occur later technical risks uh once you do the engineering experiments once you select which elements you require to design and construct it 
that is done regulatory risks is once you get the permissions and approvals you will not face regulatory risks later but some market related risks are independent of life cycle for example the demand of the project uh, it doesn't depend on the life cycle it depends on some external factors uh, suppose you have built a toll road uh, depending on the economic growth and the development of the region or the area the demand might change uh the, these whole risks are again embedded in a layer of global market risks global market risks are uh when there is a change in the world interest rates and all all these risks arise again so uh approaches to risk management there are two ways in which you can manage the risks it is uh, they are decisionering and managerial approach in decisionering you assume that the future is probabilistic but in managerial approach uh, you can't you don't assume that the future is probabilistic you have just no idea about it uh here they okay uh, because you know what the future outcome might be you think of the different options and the payoffs and select an optimal course of action uh so usual practice is you adjust the risk levels often discounting the future cash flows a uh, managerial approach uh, when the future is indeterminate so sponsors just don't sit silent till the event gives like it wins or loses they actually do some strategies to influence the outcomes uh they collect some responses they match with the strategies and uh, they match the risks with some strategies and they allocate responsibility to parties uh it's like division of risks so that the party which is good in dealing with that risk will take up that responsibility uh there are four main techniques in this uh it is shape and mitigate shift and allocate influence and transform institutions diversify through portfolios when you have more control over risks and you know, uh these have been divided based on how much control you have over the risk and how specific the risks are to the project if the if the risk is very highly a uh, very low specific to the project but you have high control then you directly allocate and mitigate otherwise uh, depending on the different things you do that the strategies to face risks uh two simultaneous processes are involved which is you need to assign the risks first and then infusion of governability a uh, reason assign assignment has a layered process first you uh, find out what the risks are you imagine and then allocate them uh, some risks are discovered but some risks are not known in advance so what the sponsors do is uh, they sit along with the parties they take joint decisions and they allocate the risks depending on who can uh, control the risk well uh in this way instead of a big risk a major risk being handled by like a group of people it is divided it's called slicing of risks uh and the design of responses to the risks is done based on the cost benefit basis layering process uh, the many the sponsors usually uh, uh take these six primary mechanisms first you assess and understand the type of risk and then you transfer the risk third step is diversifying or pooling diversifying is uh, you divide the risk such that uh, 
the major loss the total loss which you are getting getting will be minimalistic uh, and then you create options you want to deal with the risk in multiple ways so you create options uh, of the responses in which you can deal with the risks and then you shape the risks and finally you just embrace the residual risks uh what is comparative advantage in risk taking so whenever people want people or uh, the parties want to become a member of a project the selection is done based on their comparative advantage in taking risks if the party is not coming forward or not willing to take any risk there is no point in giving the membership in that so the relative superiority can depend on uh, can vary depend on depending on these three things few parties can have more information about the risks and impacts uh, few parties can have influ influence on the outcomes or few can have the ability to diversify the risks properly uh so this shows their ability to get uh, get information influence and diversify so uh we can take an example of local portfolio investors uh uh i'm sorry the color grading was different it's like green means high and that uh red means low so local portfolio investors can have high access to information uh they can't influence well but they can just moderately diversify uh so risk management we want to do it effectively so effective uh, risk management you allocate the risk such that okay, uh, the risk allocation is done in a way that the private parties which are taking the risks they are provided some incentives so that they can perform well so this gives effective risk management uh, this can be measured only on the outcomes and so finally management of financial risks uh, uh demand and supply risks this can be uh, avoided by doing proper market research without do doing any errors in uh, estimating the demand then social and institutional risks you create awareness among the people about the points which are there in the contract you negotiate with them you give compensations to them and you can avoid that regulatory risks you can avoid the delays uh, in getting approvals by creation of a separate authority which will just take care of these works thank you so the the first thing uh and i just wanted to reclarify is the difference between a risk and an uncertainty risk is when you know enough about the probabilities of what is likely to happen uncertainties are when you don't so if i know there's a 50% chance of rain then that's a risk if i have no idea what the weather will be like that's an uncertainty 